Hello everyone, Salam Aleikum and welcome to my channel. My name is Shanae and I am a convert. I don't like <laughs> the word convert for some reason or the word revert. I feel like it separates you, kind of, you know, because a lot of people say, oh, this person's a convert, mashallah, revert, mashallah, which I mean, it's, it's good. But I feel like at the same time, it separates you. But anyway, it's another thing. So when I do talk about myself in Islam, I prefer to say that I accepted Islam. That's what I say. I accepted Islam. So I accepted Islam in 2013, the last 10 nights of the Ramadan. It was actually August 2nd. And it was about 2, 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. And it's been history ever since. So it's been four years. Well, this Ramadan, it will officially be four years since I have been Muslim, inshallah, inshallah. <clears throat> so I come from a Seventh-day Adventist background. A lot of people know what Seventh-day Adventists are. A lot don't. But a lot of people do say Seventh-day Adventists and Muslims are like this. <laughs> They're, they're very close as far as the practices go, as far as no alcohol, no fornication, no, um, no pork, and, and different things like that. Seventh-day Adventist worship from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, those are holy days, or um, more holy, the days for worship. And so, when I began to learn about Islam, everything I heard, everything I would read, immediately made sense to me it clicked for me and I grew up in the US and where I'm from there's a good amount of Somali so at the time I was interacting with a lot of Somalis or a lot of Muslims in general so whenever they would speak about Islam I agreed there was nothing I didn't disagree with and of course at first because you grew up one way and then you're hearing another way or you grew up in one religion and you're hearing another you have you're, you're a little defensive but at the same time I always believed everything they were saying and also I like to say that which is true Islam is the first religion that I've ever accepted so even though I grew up as a Seventh-day Adventist I was never baptized everyone in my family is baptized and Every time I would go to get baptized and take Bible study classes before I got baptized, I could never bring myself to take that last step. And so I decided in 2013 to fast two days before Ramadan began. I was actually in Canada visiting family and I was listening to a Yasmi Mujahid lecture. This is when I started looking up Islam more, you know, finding out what does Islam, Islam mean? What is Islam like home? Um, what do Muslims believe? You know, different things like that. What are the differences between Islam and Seventh-day Adventists or Christianity? And I don't remember the specific lecture, but it had some... Uh, she was talking about... She was tying into her book, uh, Reclaim Your Heart, her book into her lecture. And something she said struck me. And so I tell myself, I'm going to fast the entire month of Ramadan, which I did, alhamdulillah. And so... At the time, my good friend, I would go to her house for iftar. I would, then we would go to the masjid for tarawih after. And it was seeing Islam in action, I guess you can say. Seeing Muslims and how Muslims act and their beliefs and how peaceful they were and welcoming. That's what did it for me as well. So I would go to the masjid every night of Ramadan for Tarawih. I learned how to pray because we would pray together. I would pray with my friend after iftar and I would watch her motions and then I would, you know, follow that. And the same thing at the masjid. I would watch everyone's motions and you know Tarawih, you're doing so many rakas. So I would, I, I would follow everyone's actions and that's how I learned how to pray. And it was, again, two to three o'clock in the morning and at the, I was with my friend at the time and I asked her I said is the Imam here and she was like yeah they're here all the time why and I was like oh no I just want to know because you know everyone's always in and out the masjid all throughout the day so I wasn't sure and the, the Imam at the time lived right next door to the masjid and oh one more thing so that night as well I 
was driving to the masjid and I had the Quran playing in my car because I wanted I was listening I wanted to um, memorize different surahs and it just so happened to be on the uh, surah, surah al qadr and I was like texting like I think it's the la I think it's Layat al qadr I think it's Layat al qadr and, and so everyone like ran to the masjid and so it was that night even though I, I still feel like that night was Layat al qadr inshallah but yeah, so she was like, oh, let's go in the mom's office. Do you want to go? And I was a little hesitant. I was like, no, because at this, at this time, I didn't, I didn't, I believed in Islam, but I was going, I guess, back and forth, forth with myself as, is this the truth? And so I didn't have intentions of taking Shahada that night. Like I knew in my heart it was the truth, but it was a mental thing, you know, growing up one way for so long. And I didn't have intentions of taking Shahada this night, but then somehow I ended up um, somehow we ended up, I ended up agreeing to go to the imam's office. And there, the imam wasn't there, but there were like four or five other brothers there. And so I started telling them my experiences and what I believed. And they called the imam and he walked over. And next thing you know, I ended up taking shahada. Mm -hmm. And it was definitely a surreal experience for me. And that night, when I went, or that morning, when I went home after Fajr, I laid down and then I felt like my old soul lifted up out of me and like a new soul was, was breathed into me. And it was, I felt like I was floating at the time. And it's been that way ever since. There have definitely been, uh, it's definitely been a journey. It's definitely been an experience. Because everything about your life changes, but at the, si at, the, at the same time, everything stays the same. And it's just been different experiences and challenges with my personal life in terms of family and my social life. But it not really, it hasn't been such a challenge, but at the same time, I guess it depends on certain topics, which brings out the truth or people's true feelings or how they feel uh, at the time, which becomes a challenge. But I definitely love it, and I love the hijab, and um, the hijab is like my form of dakwah. So anytime anyone asks me about Islam, it's really because of, you know, they see the hijab and then they want to know. And so I, act I, I moved to Miami uh, about three or four months after I accepted Islam, and it seems like there Islam is not as big as other places. So I was always being asked questions, and I love to answer questions about Islam and give my experience. I can't speak for anyone else, but I love giving my experience, my perspective, and again, it's my form of dahwa, so I have no problem doing that, and I love it, and I love being that billboard for Islam, I guess you can say. So I just want to go ahead and kick off my channel and go back and forth and share my experiences with you, and if you have any questions or any comments, please share that with me, share your experiences with me, and hopefully we can go back and forth. So this year I decided to take a year off because I was going to school full time, I was working full time, I was volunteering full time, and I just wanted this year, 2017, to be a year for me, to have all my time so I can venture off into different things that I, you know, when your schedule is so full that they fall by the wayside. So I really wanted to dedicate my time to more spiritual growth, travel, and, you know, different activities and different hobbies that I wanted to get into, but I didn't have time. So thank you for listening, and I will be traveling. I will be all about, but I will still be here with you. So I hope to see you soon. Please stay tuned in. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum.